In this video, we'll look at the main network settings required for successful multicasting with Savvy. Here's a quick overview of what we'll be covering. While all these settings will be configured at the switch, we won't be going over general switch management or how to set up VLANs. All of these settings are crucial for clear and reliable video distribution. If these settings are not enabled, you'll likely see artifacts, tearing, or freezing in the video content, or the image may not load at all. I'll be demonstrating with a Netgear AV switch from the M4250 line, but the settings we'll discuss will need to be enabled on any switch used with Savvy Canvas, regardless of brand. You may encounter a few settings or additional features that are configured in a different way from this video, but the overall concept should be the same. That being said, the switches in question do need to be managed. An unmanaged switch does not have the features necessary to correctly handle multicasting. To begin, I'll pull up my switch's UI by navigating to the IP address. Before we begin looking at some advanced settings, I'll first log into the AV UI section using the same credentials as the main login. Netgear's AV UI is a more simplified view that makes the basic AV settings more prominent. It also allows us to load various network profiles that automatically enable a host of AV settings automatically. While it's a great starting place, the AV profile we choose will not turn on flow control, which is one of the required settings, so we'll need to enable that manually. The profile I'm going to load is video with AES67 audio. Like the name implies, this will automatically configure several options needed for video and audio over IP, and it's a great choice as far as compatibility with a wide range of digital AV devices, including the Savvy Stream 1s and DSP. I'll now click the gear icon and configure the profile before applying it. From here, we can choose to apply the profile to specific ports by clicking them, or simply select a VLAN ID and apply the profile to the entire VLAN. It appears the profile was applied successfully, but I still need to enable flow control. I can do this in port configuration under Port Interface Settings. Any port involved in distributing or receiving video content will need to have flow control enabled. To keep things simple, I'll click Select All Ports and open up the flow control dropdown. You can see I have the options of symmetric and asymmetric. With switch configurations that give you a choice between these two, choose symmetric, otherwise asymmetric will work. Without one of these, you will run into video corruption on your displays. Once selected, I'll hit Apply. Once all our configurations have been made, it's important to hit the Save button at the top of the UI. Without doing this, the switch would revert back to the default settings after a reboot. I'm now going to log out and log back in, this time into the main UI, in order to verify all my multicast settings were applied correctly. You can also make these configurations from the main UI if you're more comfortable with it. The first section I'll navigate to is switching and then ports. Under the flow control column, you can see all ports are listed as symmetric. From here, go to multicast, IGMP snooping, then IGMP snooping VLAN configuration. We recommend the simpler approach by configuring snooping by VLAN instead of by interface. Not only is IGMP snooping enabled by default for VLAN 1, but the fast leave option is as well. This is good. With Fastleave turned on, an AV device no longer needing a stream can send a leave message, which immediately removes it from the multicast group membership table. Without this, a display would still be receiving a video stream it's not interested in. The display's network interface can become saturated with this unneeded traffic, which can impact a display's video quality. Next, we'll look at the IGMP querier by clicking on Querier Configuration. Before making any changes, you need to decide what switch will fill the role of IGMP Querier. This will typically be the primary or root switch for an AV VLAN. Multiple switches with Querier enabled on the same VLAN could result in conflicting group membership info, meaning some displays may not get the desired content. Now let's look at the Querier VLAN configuration page, specifically the setting marked Querier Election Participate Mode. In most cases, a switch is either the primary, with Querier enabled, or it's a secondary switch, meaning the querier would be disabled. However, if your setup includes multiple switches that might serve as a backup for the querier, election mode means the switch with the lowest IP in the set of switches automatically serves as the querier. Use caution when configuring the querier settings across multiple switches to avoid network degradation. Finally, remember to hit the save button after all your configurations have been made. Before we end, we'll look at some general guidelines relating to AV network management. 
As mentioned previously, managed switches are required for efficient multicasting. While all quality brands of managed switches are generally compatible with Savvy, it's recommended to avoid mixing and matching brands within the same set of AV switches, as numerous configurations and minor default settings can create hard-to-solve complications and may require more time spent troubleshooting or fine-tuning. It's also recommended to focus on AV line switches, which makes it much easier to get the right AV settings applied in the shortest amount of time. You should be all set for multicasting. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe for more savvy training videos.